Good day and welcome to Women on the Move Live. I'm your host, Kim McNair. Now this show is for women who are in business, about business, and ready to do business. So if you're a small business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a pay set in the community, this show is for you. So what I need you to do is call a friend, tweet a friend, hit them up on Instagram, better yet, Facebook, and let them know that Women on the Move Live is on the air. again and my guest today oh my goodness she's a regular here at women on the move live i want you all to welcome dr sherry Blake. good morning how are you oh glad to see you doctor thanks for having me back yes oh yeah we have to i mean you know you you bring a lot that. to the table people love Thank seeing you, you on the show i've gotten great reviews from you oh, being wonderful. here so i always have to have you come back so i pay it off everybody i need to yes. make sure yes 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 <laughs> no but i really appreciate that oh Thank that you. is good that is good well just wanted to just touch base on base mm -hmm. on mental health. I mean, you're a uh, mental health a psychologist. Um, mm -hmm. You're you you know you do so many amazing things, and I just want you to share a little bit. Now, from what I understand now, mental health is kind of more openly talked about. It and is. I'm just, I, I don't know, I was watching TV and I saw something, so just break a little bit down for us. You know, it is really improving in terms of people's ability to talk about it openly. It mm -hmm. used to be a thing people just wouldn't talk about. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's happened, it's become very fashionable. It's on TV, it's in sitcoms, uh -huh. it's on, you know, on reality TV. Yes. And it's on the news, so we can't avoid it, but it is a serious matter. Mm -hmm. What people don't realize, everyone has mental health. Mental health is just like physical health. Ah. But everybody is not mentally ill. So most people, when they think about mental health, mm -hmm. they go straight to mental illness. And everybody's not mentally ill. Right. We all have days when we don't feel uh, good or we don't want to get out of bed, but we're not all depressed. Mm -hmm. But when people think about mental health, they immediately think about severe mental illness. And there is so much in between that because we have to deal with everyday issues that stress us out. Okay. Makes it, make us feel anxious. And people are talking about it, at least in some communities. In some communities. In okay. some communities. Right. So I got I got I have a little a little mental health in, in me uh, when I get it you know, get anxiety. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh. But do you talk about it? Everybody yeah, has anxiety. Yeah, I do. I said I'm a little anxious today. Yeah. I just oh god, and I got you know, good. and you know, and it's like even, you know, when you're getting ready for to come on set and getting oh. ready for the day the night before and all yeah. that, it's like all That's these things. That's normal. That is normal. Most people, you know, they feel a little butterfly here. Uh -huh. But the good thing is it's not to the point that you don't show up. All right, See, all right. Once it starts interfering, that's when we start taking mm -hmm. note. And you know, because it's okay to feel anxious, it's uh -huh. okay to feel down, it's okay to feel sad. But if you're depressed, you're not getting out of bed. You may not feel like getting out of bed, right. but you'll get out of bed. Right, right, right. Okay, yes, yes, so yes. So okay. there's a big difference that's there. A big difference. And it's not only just adults; it's children as well. Yeah, and we won't talk about people. that. And we just sort of ignore things, but we can't afford to ignore them. No, we can't because there's a lot of things that go on. I was talking with a parent the mm -hmm. other day um, that had some issues, similar issues that mm -hmm. I had with my son uh, in high school, mm -hmm. uh, where they were kind of almost labeling them. And yeah. they, we, they were at two different high schools. Yeah. And I just, and I was like, why, you know, I went through and I was just one of those parents, mm -hmm. oh, no, 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 yes. I'm going to be here. I'm That's going, right. my son's now eight years in the military. Right. Her son is now in the military. That's right. But at the time, mm -hmm. it was just so much going on. And I, I, we thought about what about all the kids that were that didn't have the parents, didn't have the mother like us that fell yeah. through the gaps that may have now developed this Absolutely. sense of, you know, something that, that they know, didn't need? As a parent, most most parents uh -huh. really want to be on top of it, mm -hmm. but every parent is not like you or myself or many others. And so kids do fall through the crack. Mm -hmm. And it's really a shame because they could get help early right. and did not have to endure what they're enduring as no. adults. And it's very interesting. Recently, I was dealing with a college student that was cutting herself. Oh, it used to be wow. a time no one would talk about cutting. No mm -hmm. one talked about suicide. Mm -hmm. But suicide is really increasing. It's a 10th leading cause of death in the community. The third leading cause of death in, in some populations. So we have to really look at that because wow. for the first time people are going, wait a minute, we don't have to suffer in silence. 
we don't have to feel like mm -hmm. we feel. And in time, anytime we talk about mental illness, yes. we're talking about things that impact us in terms of how we think, mm -hmm. how we act, and how we feel to the point that it impairs us. Wow. So it's a real big difference with it that. It is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Learned facts today. We're getting facts today. <laughs> Dr. Sherry Blake has given us the facts. Well, this is great. I mean, I know this is very informative to a lot of people because everyone, mm -hmm. you know, again, we're hearing it, but they really don't know a mm -hmm. lot in there. Now, how do you feel about the those that are incarcerated, there's quite a few people that are incarcerated that is that probably should not be right. there because if they had a mental health issue. You know, that's a big deal. And one of the things we don't realize that jails, uh, prisons, they're mm -hmm. becoming one of our number one mental health uh, institutions wow. because people get thrown in mm -hmm. and they do have issues. Right, and right. it's just recently, within the last few years, that people started looking at those populations and said, maybe we should separate those. Maybe we should separate people that have an issue from those that are just here because of a oh. criminal behavior. And it's very unfortunate that sometimes people have to go through a system to get help. Wow. And you don't have to do that. It doesn't have to come to that. But if you don't know when to refer, mm -hmm, you don't mm -hmm. know how to refer, you don't even know what you're dealing with, then it creates a problem. Oh. One of the things that's really big and very important, when something happens, especially within the African American community, yes. we turn to the church. And the church has okay. been. Okay, <laughs> that's right, we do. You we return do. to yes. like, we let, do. Let, let us pray. About. Yes. But if we go to a church, to a minister that is not aware, of oh, mental health, yes, not, no training, work, not no training. Not, oh, yes. We just assume, assume that it's a spiritual issue when it's really a mental health Look issue. Look at that. And so we have to be educated, and not only in the prison system, we have to be in the faith-based communities, mm -hmm. across the board, especially in the schools, because a lot of things can be avoided. It's wow. treatable. One out of four people suffer, and now they're saying one out of five, suffer from some form of mental health crisis or wow. illness. Well, oh and you goodness. think about that, and think about a church of 100, that's at least 20 people. Okay, well, I, I gotta get you at my church. I think hey, I'm gonna have to call. because it's real. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a call out. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm gonna do a call out. Uh, Doctor, uh, th th Doctor Sherry's coming to Global Impact Christian hey. Ministries. How about that? Hey, <laughs> anytime I will be there because it's nothing to be ashamed about. And we shame people. Mm -hmm. We make them feel bad. But the church is such a breeding ground for greatness, and we can do that. We can talk to people, and I'll mm -hmm. be more than happy anytime okay. in any church too. Okay. We wait until we're on life support mm -hmm. to seek help. Mm -hmm. We're ready, yeah. You, know, you don't have to. Don't do you it. You know people around you. You know your loved ones. So when you see something, mm -hmm. talk about it. Okay. Get help. Reach out to someone Just else and check it out. Okay. See something. Say something. See say something. Okay. What is that? Uh, see see something, something. Say something. We got it. We got it. We got it. Tongue twister here. Yes, we did. Well, Dr. Sherry, I want to thank you so yes. much for coming and sharing with us today. You've given us a lot of facts and some good tips. But you have a great project coming up. I do, and I'm so proud, and I'm so grateful to uh -huh. have this. I know everyone is not going to come to the office for mental health services. Everyone is not going to call people for help. Right. But sometimes they will go to their computer, and they'll look up things. Mm -hmm. One of the things I have is called the Y community, and that's W-H-Y. We always want to know what happened, but we never get to the core of why. why. And if we don't understand the why, things will never change. So the Y community is a digital platform. Uh -huh. that will be coming out. We will have information. It's a wellness uh, wow, lifestyle. Good. And it deals with mental health. There will be questions and answers. There will be general information. There will be videos. There will uh -huh, be all uh -huh. kinds of things. It's an exciting platform, but most of all, it's a place where people can go for help, seek treatment, understand how they can find a local oh. therapist in their area, wow. and what resources are available as they learn about mental health. Oh, that's great. So yeah. it's why.org. Why is the Y community dot org and the, that's okay. W H Y. Okay. The Y community dot org. Dot org. The Y community dot org. Okay, so that's good. And I'm gonna have some information on Women on the Move TV as well. So go to Women on the Move TV dot com and click the link and we'll have that go over as well. Thank you so oh, much for thank helping. You. I've enjoyed it. All right. As usual. Well, we're gonna take a break and I'll be right back. Just for you, we provide a full range of women's services. We are passionate about providing personalized and intuitive care to help our patients walk through the many phases of a woman's life. 
We provide preconceptual counseling, pregnancy and postpartum care, well woman exams, and menopause treatment, including bioidentical hormone therapy. We are located at 3976 Highway 42 in Locus Grove, Georgia. Well, my next guest, let me read you his titles. He is a U.S. Air Force veteran, former federal prosecutor, currently the vice president of Chick-fil-A Community Affairs and the executive director of Chick-fil-A Foundation, and now a best-selling author. I want you guys to welcome Mr. Rodney D. Bullock. Thank you for having me, my friend. I had to say family. all that. I had to get you it all did. in. Now, because you said all that, you eat Chick-fil-A, Kim? Yes, I eat Chick-fil-A. Can I have you... Uh, be our guest and eat some oh, more Chick-fil-A as well. I get to be his guest, eat more chicken. Yes. Okay, I did a commercial for y'all. Thank you. I need, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's hey, your thank favorite? you, thank What's you. your favorite menu item? Uh, I do the grilled nuggets. Okay. And the waffle fries. All right. I just, I love the waffle fries. Excellent. I'll go in the morning and ask for the waffle fries instead okay. of the hash browns. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll do a chicken uh, sandwich with no pickle. Good. No is that pickle. okay? That's perfect. Okay, good. It's your way. It's my way. It's not Burger King, but it is your way. It's my way. Yeah, okay. y'all know I like that. Well, I'm so glad you had time to stop over. I mean, you Thank have you. so much going on. And I see you around here and there. Yeah. But you have a new venture. You're getting ready to be a best-selling uh, author here. Best-seller. I think this is a best-seller. I hope so. Have you had a chance to peruse it at all? No, I haven't, but I heard a lot about it. I've Good. talked to some people that have had the opportunity Absolutely. to read it. We're, we're, and we're um, I'm just glad to have you here to share, you know, with our viewers and talk about yeah. the book. So is this something that you thought you wanted to do? I mean, when did you think about wanting to write a book? So it is, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And the book is mm -hmm. called Heroes Wanted. Uh, and really it's a very simple premise of, we want people to be heroes to someone else. Mm -hmm. And everybody can do that and everybody has the obligation to do it. And so it really kind of stemmed from a story in my own childhood. Wow. Uh, in first grade, I grew up here in Decatur, Georgia. Okay. Uh, South DeKalb Mall area. Decatur where it's greater? Decatur where it's greater. All right now. Still is greater. Okay. And, uh, and so love Decatur. And, Got a chance to uh, go to a, uh, my parents, my mother an educator, my father, a Baptist minister, sent mm -hmm. me to a, a posh private school in the city, uh, still in existence, wonderful school. But at some point that school called my mother and said, hey, Rodney's not reading on grade level. Oh, wow. And uh, we would like to put him in a developmentally slower class. Oh, and my okay, mother okay. had a choice to make. Mm -hmm. And so she moved me to another school, Rainbow Christian School, okay. in Decatur, off of Columbia Drive. Uh -huh. No longer in existence, but... At the time, I met a little lady by the name of Mrs. Adams. Aww. And Mrs. Adams was the shortest little lady I'd ever met. I swear I was taller <laughs> than her in first grade. And I was definitely afraid of Mrs. Adams because I was afraid she would learn that I could not read on grade level. Mm -hmm. And she did, in fact, learn that. She called my mother at the end of the school year, and she said, Mrs. Bullard, writing's not reading on grade level, but we would like... I would like, in particular, mm -hmm. to take him and teach him how to read phonetically over the summer. She did wow. that. And then I was r two and three grade levels ahead of my peers at the end of that summer. So I say all that to say she was an unexpected hero for me. Look at that. And so the book is Heroes Wanted, and we all can be someone else's Mrs. Adams. It doesn't have to be uh, teaching someone to read. It doesn't mm -hmm, have to mm -hmm. be grandiose. We talk about little H heroes and big H heroes. Big H heroes might be burning. Uh, a burning fire that you save someone from. But little eight year olds, just a word, a kind word, okay. hospitality. Uh, so, yeah, very excited about Heroes Wanted. Oh, that is great. Well, I mean, you know, when I saw it and I, you know, I was getting the, the press release and different things and Heroes Wanted, okay, now wait a minute. So, mm -hmm. you know, I thought like, I need to get my cape. You know, <laughs> yes, you, you do. Get in the phone book. Yes, you do. A real one. <laughs> Cause I need to do all that, but it's more so about the community, it is. Um, you know, and those, like you said, those those people that have made a difference have been our little heroes. I mean, I can think about Miss Latman, who was my there hero, because I was the talking girl in <laughs> class, and uh, she called my grandmother. And uh, back then we had cloak rooms, and my grandmother had to, was in the cloak room. We came back from lunch, and here go Kim. <laughs> See, I'm in the right spot. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? It taught me a lesson, yes. uh, a great lesson. Yes. And um, I think that, uh, you know, she kind of got me on the path of where I am today. Absolutely. So thank you, Ms. Lightman. You're my hero. I love it. And in fact, I would mm -hmm. love for folks to go to uh, Heroism on Display or go to HeroesWantedBook.com and share because everybody has a Ms. Lightman, a Mrs. Oh, yes. Adams, and go to HeroesWantedBook.com yes. and share your story. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. So tell people about that and, and, and the different ones. Well, look, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back and we're going to talk about the nine, the, these nine components uh, that he has in this book. I want him to break that down for us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Are back. I'm still sitting here with Rodney. We're just chopping up. We're having a good time. We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, listen, before we went to break, I wanted to find out about those nine components of heroism yes. that you have. So really, we talk about nine components, all C's, and it goes mm -hmm. from calling to commitment. Mm. And we talk about those C's, and those are the aspects of a hero. Okay. And so we all have an aspect. We all have a calling to be someone else's hero. And we talked about it earlier. But even more so, I think about communities and I think about the lives of others when we don't have heroes. Oh, yes. And, and really, the desolate nature of communities when mm -hmm. people haven't stepped up to help someone yeah. in education and safety uh, in little things, little league. And, oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I think about a particular story. I was at Chick-fil-A. You know, I work for Chick-fil-A. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I was at Chick-fil-A, and, and a lady asked me about volunteering in the community. And she said, look, I'm different and in, from the community we're going into, and I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I don't live there. Mm -hmm. And she said, so how can I actually connect? And, and I remember telling her, just be a friend. Mm. And just, just be, a be a friend. You don't have to do anything more than that. Just be a friend. And we all have that capability. Wow, that's good. That's that's yeah. tight work, as they say. Look here, out here, right? <laughs> I'm, I got you. I got to keep up. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I know you're excited I with am the book. Um, you know, you put a lot of hard work. In. Was it a long process? Took me about a year I, and a half. Because I need to do me one. Took me about a year and a, a half. Yeah, I got to. Now, wait a the year. trick for me was I get a chance to speak a lot, and I know you speak a lot. Uh huh. So really, these stories are uh -huh. collections of stories and stories of people whom I met. And okay, so that's one way to look at the it. book is a whole curation of great people doing work in Chicago and Ethiopia. Um, there are real life stories like that of Rosa Parks. There are stories from my own childhood. And so I think that the readers mm -hmm. will find themselves in this book someplace. Wow. Okay, good, good. Well, I, I'm definitely going to, you know, I'm going to, you're going to sign one for me for you. I leave. have it. Yes, without question. Okay. All right. And uh, we have uh, something at, at the church where I go to okay. and we kind of, we, do, we do books and brunch. Books and brunch. Books and brunch. My okay. first lady does it. It's a quarterly Excellent. thing. So I want to, I'm definitely going to share this with her and uh, maybe we can have you come. But it's Global Impact Christian Ministries, Pastor yes. Spence O'Neill in Stockbridge. I will have to come visit with you. I yes. worship with you all. Yes, you do. I you do. I, I, I've been, you know, I, I, I enjoy the ministry, doing a lot in the community. Yes. Um, and that's what he's really big on. And I know this would be a good read for Books and Brunch. Yes. All right. Yes, so you wanted to mention uh, a few people that have So I, I really would like to thank Lecrae. Oh. Uh, Oh, yes. Gospel artist, Grammy Award winning artist Lecrae, who wrote the foreword. Also, like to thank Dan Cathy, CEO of Chick fil A and yes. chairman of the board of Chick fil A. He wrote also an endorsement. Steve Reinerman, former CEO of Pepsi mm -hmm. uh, Company, who also wrote an endorsement. Great friend of mine, uh, Brigadier General Stacy Hawkins, okay. brother, who wrote an endorsement as well. Oh, that was a great contributor. Absolutely, and really a variety of contributors to mm -hmm. show that everybody can be a hero. Look at that, and they're so, all here. They, so they, they're here, little heroes for you. Just say, are. look, you know, hey, I need you to. They they went on in there and without, did the dog on thing. Question, I appreciate that. Well, I'm glad you stopped by. I'm glad I had an opportunity to sit with you today, Thank and you. Um, you know, we'll get together. We will, we and will. we're gonna sign this book. Okay. And uh, and I look forward to doing that. All right. Well, look. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna take a break, and I'll be right back. When it comes to doing business, it pays to do it right the first time. That's why I call Price Boyd Law Firm. They specialize in business services, trademark, copyright, church law, and child care law. Attorney Andrea Boyd has the passion, the purpose, and the promise to make sure you adhere to the current laws and regulations. Well, I'm back, and my next guest is the reigning Miss Natural Hair and Health 
Expo Beauty. I'd like for you all to welcome Miss Adrian Latham. How are you? Hello, how are you doing? All right, well, I'm glad to see you here. This all this beauty. Thank you. No, you look good. I'm just looking at you and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. Oh, I love the <laughs> colors. I mean, everything is accented so well. And that crown is just amazing. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> so you're currently Miss Natural Hair. Uh, and is this like the first, the second? Which is there a number? How do they, how does this, this you know, how does it work? I'm actually the second queen. The oh. first queen was uh, Jasmine Walker. Okay. So she helped me into my transition of the crown and everything, and I'm actually getting ready to pass it to the third queen, March 10th. Oh, wow. So I'm not ready to give it up. You're not ready to give it up? <laughs> no. So how was it? How was this reign for you? What are some of the things that you've done as our Miss Natural Hair and Health Expo Beauty? It's been amazing. I've been going into schools. I've gone and read books and talked to some of the children in my community just about loving themselves and being natural. Um, I've gone to um, different events like the Sheen Magazine Legendary Weekend, uh -huh. um, the 85th uh, birthday celebration for Andrew Young. Oh, that yeah. was good, huh? Oh, that oh, was amazing. that's probably an epic. I didn't go to that. I didn't get that ticket. <laughs> wow. It was awesome just to be in the midst of so many people that did so many great things wow. throughout their life and continue doing it. It's an empowering. Wow, um, very that's empowering. great. So there's no talent involved, right? It's all about the yeah. hair. Yeah, it's all oh, about okay. just uh, rocking your natural hair, just showing your personality, being true to yourself, oh. and just really being able to shine that through. Okay, uh, so it's a lot different. Oh, mm -hmm. I got to Okay, man. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, I'm probably too uh, mature to enter. Is there an age limit? Um, the age limit is, I think it's 30. Okay. I'm going to have to double check that. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> so what's been, the, other than the, uh, the Andrew Young, uh, Ambassador Young's birthday party, what else has been like the the biggest thing or the, what, that you've experienced in being of the, the, the reigning queen? Um, the biggest thing that I've experienced is, one, when I went on this journey, just going through the natural hair and health mm -hmm. pageant, um, it was a life's journey that I was also going through. Oh, like there okay. were things that I wanted to be able to do, mm -hmm. um, just building confidence in myself and also showing like my sisters that I have and my nieces that I have, oh, you know, that self-confidence. And so, but one of the biggest things I was able to do, I've never been um, out of the United States. So one of the prizes oh. was I got to go to uh, the Bahamas, to Breezes Bahamas Resort. Wow! <laughs> yeah. So going there and just then just seeing how they love just seeing a woman with their natural hair wow. and natural beauty, that was just like a confidence booster. I came back like, hey. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Oh, good. So you, that's, that's awesome. And it's just more to come. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, you know, if it's done that much for you uh, as a confidence builder, um, you know, and then and empowering you, you're going to do this. You know, this is going to be an ongoing thing. You're going to empower oh, yeah. all the other little girls in your community. That's all and, I do. And all, I'll be on Walmart and I'll, I'll say, oh, your hair is so beautiful. You're so pretty. And it just does something for them. Just mm -hmm. like, oh, this random person told me I was pretty. See, and sometimes <laughs> they don't get it, right? Yeah. Some people don't even get that. You know, for someone to say, you look pretty, you look good, because yeah. they're always doing the opposite. You know, everybody's quick to tear you down, but mm -hmm. it's, it's great to have someone, yes, yeah. always, to have someone like yourself to kind of build them up and, and for them to be, uh, to embrace their natural hair or who they are naturally. Yeah. Did, I, did I do good? You okay. did good. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have a book. Um, the Hands That Was Dealt. Uh, it's a story of purpose. So what inspired you to write a book? And tell us a little bit about that. It's to come, right? It's or is to it? come. Okay. It's in the works. Um, what inspired me to write that was I was coming to the end of just being Miss Natural Hair and Health. And I mm -hmm. really just kind of prayed like, Lord, what's next for me? Mm -hmm. um, this has been a journey within itself, but what's next for me? And just over my lifetime, the book is really just inspired by my life. Because um, mm -hmm. there were things that I went through just being little that really started a downward spiral mm -hmm. of confidence within me that's, you know, just really starting to act out and not really understanding okay. who I was as a person. Uh -huh. And a lot of times people feel like they were just dealt a bad hand in life, that ah. the cards that they were given were just bad. This, this like they it, can't yeah. make it. Mm -hmm. This is it. You know, yeah, I can't, is. it's time for me to fold, you right. know? And so, and that's how I felt. And just going through the process of um, just, self-love and going on this journey as being Miss Natural Hair and Health, it really just kind of unfolded that 
I went through all of that for a purpose. Wow. And so I'm able to, through my book that I'm writing, to impart and help somebody else know, hey, it's for a purpose. Don't give up just Don't yet. Don't give up. That is great. That is awesome. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank and you. And it's good to see, you know, young women uh, doing this thing. You have two boys. I do. And you're going to get married. I am getting okay, married. Okay. Uh, I hope I get an invitation. <laughs> you will. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, and now do I have to, now where do you, you, you live in Birmingham? I live in Tuscaloosa, which Tuscaloosa. is okay. maybe 45 minutes to an hour from Birmingham. Okay. So I got to go from Atlanta to Tuscaloosa to the wedding. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that at all. Well, how did you, let, just let me ask, how did your boys feel? about it when you when they see mommy and her crown and and, uh, and everything oh my gosh, they're excited like they were with me through the whole practice of just walking down the hallway trying to make sure my walk was right and okay. they were just right there cheering so once I got the crown uh -huh. the first thing they did was go to school and say my mom's a queen now all right that's right <laughs> royalty royalty like that's mom, right <laughs> everywhere we went it didn't matter if we were in a restaurant my mom's a queen oh that's wonderful <laughs> and see and they will look at other women as queen as they grow and oh that's mm -hmm. this is this is great for them it is, it is great it is. for them because they will look at women on a different level. Now, my mom's a queen, so they when they get to that age, you know, to call themselves dating or checking checking them out, yeah. they're gonna be like, "Nah, she ain't like my mama." Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No, no, I don't think she like that. And that's one thing it. I pride myself in. I'm like, "Hey, look at your mom. Look uh -huh. how I act. Look how and I present then, myself." And you look for that same thing. Okay? Look at that. <laughs> well, you're doing great things. I'm again. I'm so proud of you, and I want to say you. thank you for coming and sit down and just sharing of course, with for everyone. Me. Look, you got to come back with the book. I will. Okay. I definitely Please will. Please make sure you I let me know. Send me some information so I can have you come back. I will. All right. Well, look, <laughs> I'm going to take a break and I'll be back. Thank you so much. Thank ah, you. <laughs> At Laser Lights Cosmetic Laser Center, your family, we offer a comprehensive menu of cosmetic procedures from non surgical fat reduction to laser hair removal. Our medical director, Dr. David Whiteman, along with our skilled medical team, provides top notch care in a friendly, comforting environment. Hi, welcome to Laser Lights Cosmetic Laser Center. I'm Jackie Madison, the practice administrator here, and I'd like to welcome you to our family. Well, I want to thank you all for tuning in to another week of Women on the Move Live. I want to thank my guests, Dr. Sherry Blake, oh, Rodney Bullard, and also Miss Natural Hair and Beauty. I'm telling you, it was truly amazing this week. I, I just don't know what else I'm going to bring you guys, but I'm going to keep bringing you more and more and more. Look, go to WomenOnTheMoveTV.com to check out some of our previous shows and also to see the links and share the information that you see with others on Women on the Move Live. We're here every week just for you. So look. I just want to put a charge out to ask each and every one of you to just share, tell someone, tell a friend about what we're doing here because this platform is for women and for women in mind. And guys, we're not going to forget about you. I had some men on the show today just to let you see that I love you too. Well, look, continue to tune in. This show is being brought to you every week by Ohio Christian University in Morrow. Thank you, guys. I'm signing off. Kim McNair, I'll see you next week. <laughs>